Hi, I'm Tristan Ferlomilewski, director of the film Dream Boat, which is running in the section Panorama. Ich bin schwul, ich konnte mir das nicht aussuchen. Ich hatte Glück. Ich kann so lange jung und knackig sein wollen, wie es mir Spaß macht. I left Palestine because I had problems with the police there. Because I'm gay. I don't hate my country, but I appreciate Belgium. Because without Belgium, I didn't have the second chance to live. I'm 32 now, and I have never ever been into a relationship. And that is something not good. I have worked very hard in the way I want to look when I'm in the boat. This is a golden opportunity for me to find love. My gay wishes, it was like more virtual than real. So if I had any like sex dreams, it was more like conversation, like chats on the internet than proper meets. Welcome Tristan Falomileski, director of Dreamboat. Nice to have you here. Thanks for coming. Thank you for welcoming me here. What fascinated you so much about the topic of a gay cruise that you decided to make a documentary about it? Well, I'm generally as a director fascinated by microcosms and um, of course you can imagine this boat with the 3,000 men is a microcosm and the interesting part of microcosm in my opinion is that they on one hand they set up their own rules and norms and normativities but on the other hand they also reflect the norms uh, of the or they reflect aspects of the bigger society so because we all of course bring our society our background with us and there's people from countries that are uh, repressive and uh, so you there's many people that meet in this microcosm and this of course is like the uh, big boat of many stories. I was uh, thinking about when I saw your film, how did you convince the company that they let you film on the board? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question because it was really a lot of uh, um, preparation and a, a work of trust together with the company because you have to see it's like the, the organizer mm -hmm. of the um, one of, the, of this gay cruise and like the company itself the cruise ship company they until now don't want to be associated with this I mean they like to take the money from the gays but they don't want to be associated with it okay. but of course the organizer they, he was more like um, of course also he had many requests before but we were the first one he actually really allowed to come on the boat and uh, because of course it's a big responsibility. So you have 89 nations, 89 nations there, and um, they, many of them come from repressive countries, or uh, they might not be out, or whatever, just want to you know, let loose on this time on the boat. And so what we did, in fact, I mean, I was uh, one year before and on a research trip there. Oh, so you went on the boat, actually? I went before, okay. yeah. And we also, with a little camera team, so we all already did a bit of footage there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then there's a Facebook group, the closed Facebook group of all passengers and future passengers. So what I made sure, of course, is to contact uh, the group and, um, and to make visible that we do a shooting here and um, to get in touch with all passengers so that everybody was really make, could make sure if he doesn't want to be in the film, he will not be in the film. And I made sure they know what the film is about and that is also a very respectful film. And we were also on the boat uh, really approachable for everybody. We had a visible camera, we were not like with a little camera. Mm -hmm. We were afterwards approachable because of course it's a big responsibility that you have to take. And I think this was then in the end uh, what also convinced the organizer to let us. Uh, he saw the film and he's very happy with it and supports us, supports us afterwards too. That's great to hear. <laughs> 
I mean, I wanted to ask you anyways about the, the cast. I mean, I, can, I would call it a cast because like you didn't choose them, the, the people that you were close with the camera um, randomly. So you did, how did you do the casting for the characters of this documentary? Yes, this, of course, this is also a um, big, uh, was of course a big search. Uh, for me, the criteria were, um, it, of course, it has to be a person, there has to be persons for whom uh, the trip on the boat also is an emotional trip, uh, it has a personal emotional meaning. Mm -hmm. Can we cut this again? <laughs> Sorry. Can't even. <laughs> okay, once again. Um, Warte, ganz kurz, wir mm -hmm. machen einen kurzen Schnitt und dann mm -hmm. fangen wir nochmal. So uh, the criteria for um, finding the people, uh, for me it was important that it's persons for whom uh, to go on the boat has also emotional meaning for different reasons and also to have people from different backgrounds and relationship status and so I found them partly on the year before uh -huh. because there's also people that are regular cruisers. <laughs> so every year they go on the, on the cruise. Okay. Yeah and um, on the other hand it was people that I met through this Facebook group by announcing that I'm interested to do this film and then I talked to many 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 people until I found this final beautiful Cast. So actually it was like social media what helped you to find the cast and yes. the actual cruising what you did a year in advance exactly, but shooting. Absolutely, yeah, but of course then I visited them at home and uh, we had before we had, I visited them we, we had Skype uh, conversations so it was of course also uh, a journey. Before. A very close relation in mm. advance I see. I mean you just mentioned that you had like so many passengers from different nations but the passengers expectations have also been very different some were looking for love and found sex and others were looking for sex and even didn't have sex so and I did wonder how was the atmosphere on board in general <laughs> if you want to talk about it yeah I mean of course you can imagine you have like this limited uh, um, amount of time you have seven days a countdown only of seven, seven days, days. Okay. yes yes and um, in this in this time <laughs> people come uh, with of course every some come for example also from restrictive countries everything has to happen in these seven days it's a big pressure and a big uh, um, Rush. expectation also. So you have this biorhythm of the boat, so people come with huge expectations. Then at the, in the middle there might be a, a bit of a down or a hangover from too much partying. <laughs> and in the end, you know, you have, or for me it was very important also to have like a, a positive out view in the end, outlook in the end. Because I think there are so many gay uh, films where it's still like, oh, it's such a tragedy to be gay, it's terrible, it's a burden, we have to all suffer from it, and yes, and this is why uh, we have to come somehow find ways to cope with it. No, I wanted to give a positive and self-confident out view on this. And um, yeah, the atmosphere is of course, um, um, uh, in, how do you say? Uh, charged, probably. Charged, yes, by this expectation and, and uh, uh, influenced by all these, all these expectations that come from the people being on the boat. And it's a pressure, it's a pressure of course, because um, it's a market also a bit, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then we can talk about this maybe later, uh, I mean, but um, what I felt like clearly that for everybody that's on this cruise, the queer family is a very important substitute family. On the one hand side, I had the idea that it makes things very easy, like there are common rules and like there's an understanding and you don't have to be ashamed. It's like clear everybody's gay, so don't have to fear any like people that will like... Um... Okay, once again. So. I mean, it was quite clear on the, on the cruise that for everybody that has been on the ship, um, the queer community has been a substitute family. On the one hand side, it made it very easy to connect. And I had at the same time the feeling that it made it sometimes very hard to get connected. Can you explain why? Yeah, exactly. This is, I think, a very interesting aspect uh, 
that I also uh, I hope that transmits in the film a bit that it has this double double bind on one hand of course and I think this is something that is very uh, um, important you have really this uh, bond uh, that connects everybody on this boat right away, I always yeah. on this um, on my when I started to get into this topic I was always thinking like we are all a bit like kicked out of paradise for different reasons you know of course in restrictive countries people had to leave their countries because it's life-threatening or dangerous other yeah. people had maybe in less restrictive countries still had to leave their village or had to break with their uh, family or it's sim simply just like the norms the normativities of our societies don't really apply the offers you have to go uh, like in the normativities of life are different so you have to kind of make your own choices and set your own normativities and so we all had this moment of being a bit kicked out of paradise and there is like this paradise regained we kind of meet again and create our own paradise but of course uh, um, there's also downsides to this paradise and as I said there's on one hand uh, we go out of the normativities on the other hand there's normativities brought created. onto the boat or created and uh, also um, we cannot deny that um, we all more or less come from a heteronormative and patriarch societies and uh, we yes, yeah. bring this onto the boat and like the, the, the ideas of masculinity, what is masculine, what is a good man, a good man has to be very masculine, very muscular and why is it worse to be feminine, why is it worse to be a feminine man and are you, what is feminine, what is masculine, all these kind of things, you know, so um, the, these two uh, things and also combined with the thing that for um, many persons it's like this seven days is like the, the days of freedom. So you can imagine that um, you come with a lot of emotions there and what happens in the end you get confronted with yourself. Where you are in life, what you look for in, in love, are you looking the right way for the right things and what do you really want, what do you desire, the, all these questions arise questions that in the end are valid for everybody of, of us I think and this is what I find uh, very important in the end is that all these questions these re ultimate life questions um, are questions that are not only relevant for the gay community or I mean a part of the gay community that is, is of course doesn't represent the whole gay community it's very as many diverse, yeah. di are very diverse, but uh, but um, anyway, these topics are relevant for all of us, I think, especially in a capitalist society. You just like uh, mentioned um, the idea of like the image or like the stereo stereotypical image of a male identity that seemed to be uh, very uh, like still like valid on the cruise. So um, even on this trip. Clearly, what you said, the passengers were under pressure to feel, fulfill this like kind of image. And I mean, what was like astonishing to me, like especially that of a straight man. So, uh, people really like suffered from that. I mean, this is like quite clearly what comes out. Why I had the idea. So, what were your impressions on that? Of course, I mean to. <laughs> to fulfill this image of a straight man could, uh, might come along, not for everybody, but might come along for some men to deny themselves. And of course, I mean, just purely to keep your body fit, to stay young, to stay muscular, it's hard work. <laughs> I never felt so untrained and unfit. <laughs> okay. I was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> so you felt like a bit like marginalized? by your body? No, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I, um, I was there for another reason. But of course, it's something that can um, apply, of course, to everybody. You mm -hmm. know? <laughs> At the end of the film, it's very clear that um, every single protagonist and like all the other passengers probably too, did personally grow on this trip. Can you give an example of the most of the, of the example, what did you impress the most? Oh, I think they all impressed me, <laughs> my uh, protagonist. They all impressed me they are, because they all, um, in a different way, um, grew or already had something, brought some personal stories and personal lives on the boat 
that uh, are very impressive and for me they are all heroes. They are all uh, strong men, even in their vulnerability. Or also I'm very grateful that they showed me uh, their vulnerability because this makes them strong. And so I was impressed by, by all the story. I mean, also of course, I mean, if you see Deepanka, who mm -hmm. comes from a repressive country, mm -hmm. India, and uh, now lives in Dubai. And before he uh, came here, he made sure to out himself in front of, also for the premiere, in front, in work, in front of his family. So and this is the result of the cruise? Yes, yeah, so he said, because I mean, he's someone who really, uh, he's a, you know, quite suc very successful businessman, mm -hmm. you know, and he sh really showed himself very, very, uh, like in his life questions. And um, he, uh, uh, he said this was such an important, revelation and journey for me and it made him really go to this next step in his life and um, he was also at the premiere and it was really really touching and he had in fact a good uh, feedback from his family and his work. Wow that's impressing. But still I'm he has to go glad. back to Dubai. Yeah? Okay. So, um, so yes so he's very courageous and I think he did uh, he feels he has done the right step and he's much more liberated also Ramsey, of course, who, you know, um, can, of course, is now a Belgian resi uh, like, uh, how do you say, citizen. Yeah. But still, you know... Uh, Originally uh, from Palestine. From Palestine. And it's also something to speak up, to, to say something about the country and not hide. Um, because in Palestine, it's like, officially, there's no law against gays. But exactly, this gives the freedom for harassment and completely arbitrary um, arresting of people. Um, so uh, it's like, up, uh, like on the surface, it seems like oh, there's nothing dangerous, but it's so dangerous to be gay there. And um, so, yeah, so they all, of course, um, for different reasons, were very courageous. Philippe, who kind of um, was with a, like, uh, in his wheelchair, um, confronting all the, like, body uh, culture also that also is on the boat and uh, was, completely uh, welcomed there and uh, you know did, did climbing and swimming yeah, this and was like a yeah. very like I was like impressed that he was yeah. like climbing the wall even yeah. though he can't walk yeah. yeah I see so one last question to you Tristan did you grow by yourself on this trip too <laughs> it's a good question I, I think um, yes of course, um, in many ways. I mean, first of all, in a, a documentary work, you always grow through, um, because in the end, you always, uh, uh, at some point, you come to the basic questions of life. Mm -hmm. And you, um, when you enter a topic and all this kind of research, all the conversation with different people entering their life, really also having the gift of them yeah. giving their trust to you, um, this makes you grow and also question, of course, where am I in life and uh, um, also what kind of gay man do I want to be? Yeah, so all these kind of things arise and you recheck your the settings of your life and um, Yes, it was for me also a big uh, We all go on a kind of a journey like the Everybody in the team we had kind of 24-hour shoots, you know, so it was seven days and days and seven nights And you don't don't even know when it's the day when it's night. Where are we? And so we grew all together. It was a, a wonderful experience Gaston, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. And good luck for your screenings and for, for sure for the Teddy Award. Thank you so much for welcoming